Welcome to this video presentation on falls prevention. Falls prevention is an interdisciplinary responsibility and nurses have the opportunity to address concerns related to falls and fall prevention in the home, community, hospital, or any setting where care is provided. This presentation will provide a broad understanding of falls, fall prevention, and useful resources. This presentation does not address all activities related to or under an LPN's responsibility, such as following universal fall precautions, clinical risk assessments, care planning, and documenting. Please be familiar with your employer's requirements and continue to inform yourself about best practices related to falls and fall prevention. The CLPNA is pleased to welcome guest presenter Melanie Morgan Redshaw from the Injury Prevention Centre at the University of Alberta. Melanie is an education coordinator and works with the community partners in education, health, government, and other organizations. She coordinates injury prevention initiatives for children, youth, and older adults, including the Finding Balance Falls Prevention Program. Melanie has a Bachelor of Education and a Master's of Education from the University of Alberta. I would like to thank the CLPNA for giving me the opportunity to present this information to you. This video presentation will cover the following learning objectives. Recognizing risk factors that may lead to a fall, identifying interventions that may help prevent falls, and becoming familiar with falls prevention resources. The Injury Prevention Centre is a research centre within the University of Alberta in the School of Public Health. The centre is funded by Alberta Health. IPC is an evidence-based organization that aims to change the beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors of Albertans to prevent life-changing injuries. The center's vision is to empower Albertans to work and play hard, free from life-limiting injuries. One of the center's priorities is to reduce the incidence and severity of falls among older adults. Finding Balance is an education program that is coordinated by the Injury Prevention Center. The main objectives are to provide older adults and practitioners with the latest information and resources and to help older adults live an active and independent lifestyle. We engage in partnerships with seniors groups, healthcare organizations, and practitioners across Alberta. Over the years, the Finding Balance program has developed a wide variety of falls prevention strategies and developed resources that have been shared with older adults, their families, and practitioners to help prevent falls. When thinking about preventing falls and the patients you work with, you must always refer to your employer's requirements and continue to inform yourself about best practices. All resources mentioned during this video presentation are available on the Finding Balance website and can be shared with teams, colleagues, patients, and caregivers. The resources are free and can be downloaded or ordered from their website. As we begin, please ask yourself this question, is falling a normal part of aging? The answer to that question is no, it's not normal. A fall is defined as unintentionally coming to rest on the ground, floor, or other lower level with or without an injury. In Alberta, only one in three people over 65 fall per year. This means that there are many older adults who are not falling. Falling is not inevitable and there are factors that separate the people that fall from the people that don't fall. There are also many factors that can be changed or controlled so we can theoretically reduce the rate of falls. Falls are, however, the leading cause of injuries among older adults. There were approximately 10,000 fall-related hospital admissions in 2019, and most falls occur at home or while a person is walking. Every day, 101 Alberta seniors are treated in the emergency department for injuries due to fall, and 27 need to be admitted to hospital for treatment. The average length of stay in the hospital for a fall is 22 days. This data does not include minor injuries such as bruises or sprains, which typically people do not seek medical attention for. What is covered in these numbers are serious injuries including concussion, fractures, and lacerations. 95% of all hip fractures and 40% of all nursing home admissions are a direct result of falling. Approximately $290 million was spent on seniors' fall-related hospital admissions in 2019. With the number of seniors expected to double by 2040, this problem is expected to increase. Fall and fall prevention education can assist in reducing injuries and decreasing health care costs. Think of a time when friends, family, co-workers, or even you yourself fell. How did you feel afterwards? Did the fall affect your life or the life of your friend or relative? What adaptations did you have to make? Did you miss work? Were you unable to take part in daily activities? Did you have to stop exercising, getting groceries, or driving? 
even if a person is not hurt, there may be consequences to a fall. Falls can change a person's routine and their lifestyle. After falls, some people may lose their confidence in their ability to get out and about. They might become afraid they'll fall again and stop doing things like meeting with friends, volunteering, working, or spending time with family. They may become weak, isolated, depressed, stop exercising or eating well, experience less independence, and live in fear of falling again. A fear of falling may lead to a decrease in physical activity, which in turn leads to muscle weakness and poor balance and poor self-reported health. There's also the belief that by staying home or limiting their activities, they won't fall. However, this is not accurate. Research supports that moving and being physically active helps people stay independent and allows them to connect with others. When adults have been asked, remaining independent and not being a burden on others are important motivators for them. For some, to overcome the fear of falling may require gentle encouragement from multiple people or from a trusted person they know, including discussing the benefits of moving. No two people fall the same way, and people fall for a variety of reasons. 70% of falls do not have a single cause. Falls can be complex, being caused by more than one thing. Risk factors interact and can influence each other. The more risk factors present, the higher the risk of falling. However, not everyone who is at risk of falling will fall. Risk factors may include balance and leg strength, environment, vision, medication, nutrition, hydration, any chronic health conditions, footwear and foot care, cognitive changes, depression, and dizziness. Risk factors are specific to a person, their environment, and their health. Some risk factors can be changed. For example, footwear, eliminating clutter, and eating balanced meals. Some risk factors cannot be changed. For example, age, some medical conditions, and medications. We need to learn how to prevent falls in spite of these risk factors. A few words about cognitive impairment. Cognitive impairment can affect a person's attention and concentration when they move. They may have more impulsive or risk-taking behaviors that can increase their risk of falling. Memory issues can result in people not remembering to use their cane or walker. Cognitive impairment can also affect coordination, balance, and depth perception. In your nursing practice, how can you get people talking about their health and the risk of falling? One way is by helping them to ask themselves the right questions. This image shows the Falls Self-Risk Assessment Resource Questionnaire available from the Finding Balance website. This is a validated, self-rated questionnaire that is a useful tool for nurses to utilize in their practice. Nurses can encourage patients to use this tool to consider their risk of falling and understand action steps to reduce risks. Some questions on this assessment tool cover risk factors that patients might not realize increase their risk of falling. There are many things nurses can do to help prevent patient falls. Think of patients who have fallen or may be at risk of falling. How are they doing and what can you assist them with? Maybe they need help getting dressed or being transported to meals. Ensuring patient safety is key. If something doesn't feel right or you see a change in a patient, consider talking with your team or supervisor about it. Part of quality of life is finding people's motivation and helping them to maintain independence. This could be encouraging them to make choices that will help them look, feel, and move better, or do the daily activities they enjoy. Take into consideration any barriers that may prevent the patient from being active or making changes that could reduce the risk of falling. Many older adults in Canada are taking multiple medications and the use of medication may increase with age. Research indicates that the higher the number of medications a person is taking, the higher the risk of falling. Taking more than five medications can increase a person's risk of falling by 75%. The type, duration, and dosage of different medications can also increase the risk of falling. When we talk about medications, we include prescriptions, vitamins, supplements, and over-the-counter drugs such as cough syrups, cough medicines, and painkillers. Sometimes patients don't mention to their health care provider that they are taking cough syrup at night to help them sleep, or that they are taking their friend's sleeping pills. It is important to stress the importance of not sharing prescription medications. As we age, the way some medications work or are handled by the body can change as well. Some of these changes may increase the risk of falling. Certain medications for sleep, relaxation, anxiety, improving mood, and de treating depression can make people dizzy or sleepy and unstable on their feet. Also, if people are rushing to the washroom at night, it can increase the risk of falling. 
This chart illustrates the potential risk of falling associated with different types of medications. It is included in the fall risk and medication resource available on the Finding Balance website. When you look at the chart, you can see the types of medication, potential side effects, and whether they could present a lower or higher risk of falling. It's important for medication to be reviewed with a doctor or pharmacist, and medication should not be stopped unless directed by a healthcare provider. The questions listed here are intended to assist patients in being a part of their health care and in understanding the medications they are taking and the reason they are taking them. Have your patient ask themselves, is this medication needed? Does it align with their goals? And is there a better option? Encourage patients to always follow the instructions and doses. Keep a current medication list in their wallet and in their home to not share prescription medications, and tell their healthcare provider about any new symptoms, such as dizziness, blurred, or double vision. Alcohol consumption can contribute to loss of strength, balance, and coordination, which may increase the risk of falls. As we age, our bodies do not break down alcohol as efficiently, and the combination of having alcohol and a sedating medication like a sleeping pill can be particularly risky. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention from the United States, falls are considered a short-term health risk from excessive drinking. Older adults who have good strength in their legs and a good sense of balance are able to function more effectively and safely in their environments. Physical activity has been shown to reduce the risk of falling and exercise that target balance, gait, and strength training can be very effective. It's important to encourage patients to perform activities that improve balance, build strength, and promote activity. It's beneficial for older adults to reach 150 minutes of moderate or vigorous activity per week. The Everyday Exercise poster for older adults is available on the Finding Balance website and is a great resource to provide patients with exercises to use to improve strength and balance. This resource is also available in French. Another useful resource is the band exercise booklet that explains how to use bands to build strength and prevent falls. Regardless of age or fitness level, exercise also provides important mental health benefits. It can improve mood, concentration, and help reduce stress and anxiety. Being active can also keep bones, muscles, lungs, and the heart healthy and strong. Exercise can also help reduce the risk of chronic diseases like heart disease and high blood pressure. Eye disease or age-related changes in vision may increase the risk of falling. Did you know, according to the Alberta Association of Optometrists, one in nine Canadians will develop irreversible vision loss by age 65. One in four Canadians develop irreversible vision loss by age 75. And some medications can cause blurred or double vision. Many eye diseases have no early signs or symptoms. Eye health is important, and regular eye examinations and correct eyeglass prescriptions are a good first step in preventing falls. Falls can happen at home, at school, in recreation and leisure, in sports, in the community, at work, and even on vacation. It's important for nurses to be aware that some hazards in the patient's environment that may cause a fall are easy to change but often overlooked. For example, removing clutter, ensuring all rugs and mats are non-slip, and the proper maintenance, fitting, and storage of mobility devices can help to lower the risk of falling. The bathroom is a room where falls may happen, and walking up and down stairs and other trip hazards in their environment may also increase the risk of falling. The Finding Balance website provides resources that share strategies to promote a safe environment. Alberta Health Services also has a webpage called Preventing Falls, Injury Prevention and Safety, Information for Health Professionals. Research indicates older adults may be susceptible to becoming malnourished and dehydrated. Understanding the relationship between adequate nutrition, hydration, and how these can impact a person's risk of falling are important, especially when taking medications. Good hydration and nutrition habits are important to maintain healthy body functions and overall health. As patients age, taking care of their feet and wearing proper footwear are important to assist in preventing falls. Feet are that are healthy and pain-free can help patients in keeping their balance. Encourage patients to wear proper fitting and supportive footwear inside and outside their home. Footwear should have a non-slip tread, high heels, slip-on sandals, untied laces, pressure stockings, and bare feet on certain flooring can be hazardous. 
The proper shoe resource is an information sheet available from the Finding Balance website. It illustrates things that may be easy to fix with your patient's footwear, but which are sometimes overlooked. Nurses can encourage patients to speak to a healthcare provider if they feel pain or notice any changes in their feet. In a survey conducted by the Public Health Agency of Canada, walking on snow or ice was cited as the second most frequent activity where people fall. Remind patients that winter footwear should have the proper amount of grip. Winter grips with spikes or coils can be added to shoes to assist with this. If a patient walks with a cane, a retractable ice pick can be used on the end for added stability. Walk Like a Penguin is a useful resource created by Alberta Health Services to assist with avoiding a fall. Encourage your patients to walk like a penguin. They can bend slightly and walk flat-footed. They can point their feet out slightly like a penguin. Advise them to keep their center of gravity over their feet as much as possible. They can pay careful attention to where they are stepping and take shorter, shuffle-like steps. Keeping their arms at their sides will allow them to grip onto handrails, and going slowly will help them to concentrate on keeping their balance. In previous slides, we covered ways to avoid a fall. It is also important to educate patients on the proper technique to get up from a fall if they have not injured themselves. If you witness a patient who has fallen, refer specifically to your employer's requirements. You can also encourage your patients to prepare for when they do fall plan what to do, and practice how to get up from the floor safely if they fall. The How to Get Up From the Floor resource found on the Finding Balance website provides illustrated steps for getting up from a fall safely and is available in 15 languages. Alberta Blue Cross, the Injury Prevention Centre, and Finding Balance partnered to create the Keeping Well for Older Adults booklet. This valuable resource is available to order from the Finding Balance website. It covers many of the topics in this presentation and several other areas. It is designed to help older Albertans stay well, keep active, and stay connected to lower their risk of falling. A wide variety of free resources on how to support older adults in preventing a fall are available on the Finding Balance website. The more a patient has or is exposed to risk factors for falls, the more likely a fall may occur. Nurses play a very important role in educating patients to improve safety and mitigate fall risks. No matter what a patient's abilities are, most can improve their strength and balance, and many risk factors can be identified and addressed. Think about one way you can help promote awareness of fall prevention. Thank you for the interest you have taken in this important topic. Please feel free to share resources discussed in this video presentation. If you have any questions regarding this video presentation, please contact the CLPNA practice team at practice at clpna.com. Thank you.